further. Um, speaking of debate, we had an interesting one last week, Scott, uh, about uh, the issue of, uh, you know, Stalin and Mao and uh, all of that. And it's uh, gotten a lot of uh, traction. People are interested in uh, what we're talking about. Uh, it seems to me, though, that we didn't dig deeply enough into it because essentially what we're talking about uh, with respect to these issues is the difference between what we've called middle class or petty bourgeois radicalism, you know, on the one side and Marxism on the other. What do you think? Yeah, I, I, I would agree. Um, and, you know, we, when we talk about petty bourgeois radicalism, middle class radicalism, I mean, the, the thing that sort of defines it for me is um, kind of a, a leaping to conclusions about um, the, the immediacy of revolution and the, the uh, how close the, um, you know, the state is to complete failure. So, you know, it, it's very easy in a time like this to say that, you know, we're in this profound crisis and, and capitalism is on its heels and we need to, you know, um, seize the initiative and, and you know. General strike. Gen uh, it could be a general strike. It could be, you know. Um, revolution tomorrow. Revolution tomorrow. It could Go be for it. <laughs> form a, we're gonna form a, a, you know, sort of a revolutionary, van uh, vanguard revolutionary commune and, and organize from there. Dual power. <laughs> or or uh, the, the notion of dual power, like, the, you know, the state can't take care of uh, our, our needs, either politically or, or socially or economically, so we're going to set up other institutions that will be the basis of a new state. Those don't take into account the, the daily existence of working class people, the fact that, you know, um, people still have to put food on the table and they still have to, you know, and people... I think, anyway, most people want what they would consider a normal life, right? Mm -hmm. People people are not, um, people don't wake up in the morning, most people anyway, and say, whew, I, would, I hope everything gets torn down today and we can rebuild a new state from the ashes. Mm -hmm. uh, that's my sense anyway. I don't know. I, you know, I really appreciate this uh, conversation, this topic in particular, because um, there is a very large movement out there. I don't know if it's a unified movement, um, but it's big on the internet. It's big amongst young, from what I've seen, um, young white intellectuals and um, college educated uh, people on the internet who read about these ideas and they believe that it is, it's very necessary and immediate, as you were saying. They think that, um, you know, by reading Mao, you know, or, you know, some other uh, maybe an anarchist or something, they think that that can immediately happen tomorrow because they're so frustrated with the system. And I think uh, many of us on the left sometimes tend to forget that we live inside a bubble sometimes. We surround ourselves with reading certain articles and you know certain theory that we're, we get out of touch with the working class. And that, I think that's what I really appreciate about uh, about our party is that we're so in touch with the working class because we understand that yes, even though the economy is failing right now, we have this global pandemic making people, you know, um, apply for unemployment and such. It does not mean that the masses of people are demanding a socialist revolution. They're not. There's many people who support Bernie Sanders and that they support the idea of socialism, you know, in terms of healthcare and such. But in terms of workers ready to seize the means of production, we're not quite there yet. And that's why we really have to continue to push uh, to unite workers around the issues. What are the issues? What are the demands we're making in light of this crisis with the upcoming um, elections this year, right? If they're happening, you know, Trump's talking about can canceling them. Uh, but we have to unite around that. And that's how we can get organized and radicalized, if you will, um, because it's not going to happen tomorrow. We have to be realistic about this and understand where we are in the struggle. So a placing of long-term demands as immediate ones is one feature of uh, a middle-class radicalism. What about kind of a workerist approach? Class, 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 but not seeing gender or not seeing the democratic uh, struggle for equal rights for LGBTQ people 
for not seeing nationality and race uh, as central organizing uh, features. Scott, is that also? Uh, you know, I, I, will, I had not, I had never thought of that as a, as a particularly, you know, petty bourgeois. What about Trotskyism? Isn't uh, that the orientation? Well, Look at the 1619 debate. Well, I, I mean, I think, you know, the, the rejection of um, democratic struggle uh, by, by some people in the Trotskyist movement. Um, you know, it, it, it's true, it happens. It's not what I consider, or what I would see as the, the kind of central point of, of, of Trotskyism, uh, or the, the particularly petty bourgeois aspect of it, which has mm -hmm. more to do with the, you know, um, the fetishization of, of kind of bottom up spontaneous action, you know, don't trust union leadership, don't trust whatever. Um, and, and the, yeah, I don't know. I, Michael, what do you let think? Me, let, me, let, me, let me pose the question even a little more, more sharply. What about the, and, and we're very sympathetic to the Sanders movement, don't get me wrong, we're very sympathetic to his placing of the issue of socialism. But what about some of the negative aspects of their initial reluctance to address the special issues of, uh, of a race and gender and to put forward platform issues that address them. Is that a feature of middle-class radicalism? I think I see, yeah, I think I see where you're also coming from, Joe, just because that we face the problem sometimes of being what we call class reductionists. Um, where we say everything's class and we don't take into consideration that the LGBT community are also members of the working class. You know, there's many LGBT workers in the workforce. Uh, race, you know, the workforce is very diverse. And so when we just say race or uh, class, class, class before all else, I think we're really um, excluding um, all these different factors that play a role in the class struggle. We use the word intersectionality. Yes, everything's connected. But it's also part of class struggle, the struggle for democracy, the struggle for, you know, the struggle against racism, the struggle for LGBT rights, the struggle for immigrant rights. That's all part of class struggle. So we can't just say, you know, with uh, socialism and revolution, all that's going to get cleared up. You know, that doesn't go away overnight. So, you know, it's a constant. You're right, but everything can't be reduced to class. There are some all class issues, too. That is to say, racism affects all black people, whether you're rich or poor. Discrimination against LGBTQ and women, all women face sexism, all LGBTQ people face homophobia. So it's class, but a, a, a Marxist approach also sees to democratic broader issues, you can't reduce everything to class. And- um, Again, I, you know, I, I agree entirely yeah. with that. Um, right. uh, and and the, the and class reductionism or, or economism are, um, are ah. problems, but I don't, again, I, I guess I, I haven't really, uh, I've, I've never thought of them as particularly petty bourgeois trends within- Economism, that's another important, is it a feature of middle-class radicalism? I think it is. Okay. Uh, and a step away from a consistent working class uh, uh, Leninist approach, uh, if you will to politics today. Well, we're gonna to have to leave it there. I think we've gone even over time. And I think that uh, we're gonna get a, hope, a lot of feedback. Before we go, we wanna refer you back to our website at cpusa.org. We've got a whole section on the coronavirus crisis. Please check it out. We invite you back to our town hall on Sunday eight o'clock it will be streamed live here on our facebook uh you can go to our website to get the link for the live stream on zoom as well um that does it for us folks so scott michael have a good weekend stay physically distant but communally and socially close and be healthy we'll comrades stay healthy take care bye-bye